Good morning. If the children of Israel were unfaithful in keeping the Sabbath, who would set the fire that would burn in the city of Jerusalem? Let's find out. Jeremiah 17, verses 24 through 27. And it shall be, if you heed me carefully, says the Lord, to bring no burden through the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but hallow the Sabbath day, to do no work in it. Then shall enter the gates of this city kings and princes sitting on the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their princes, accompanied by the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this city shall remain forever. And they shall come from the cities of Judah and from the places around Jerusalem and from the land of Benjamin and from the lowland and from the mountains and from the south, bringing burnt offerings and sacrifices and grain offerings and incense, bringing sacrifices of praise to the house of the Lord. But if you will not heed me to hallow the Sabbath day, such as not carrying a burden when entering the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle a fire in its gates, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. Now, God's promises usually have the format, do this and be tremendously blessed, or if you rebel against it uh, and do the opposite, you'll be tremendously cursed. That's more or less the pattern we see very frequently over and over here. And I think we see it right here. God promised that if the people faithfully observed the Sabbath, that the leaders, the rulers, the kings would come into the city, people would be blessed, and the city would stand, I think we saw the word forever there. He would preserve the leaders of the nation and preserve the temple, and people would flow into the temple from all over to worship the Lord of heaven and earth. If they refused, God himself would kindle a fire in Jerusalem that no human person can put out. God is holy, and we cannot worship him unless we ourselves respond to his call and enter into his holiness. He's a holy God. The Sabbath was God's sign to his people that he was their savior. He was their healer and redeemer and helper and deliverer. Not their own works, but God's merciful provision is the source of their salvation. It's the source of their merit. We do not save ourselves, but God saves us through the sacrifice of Christ, with the merits of his sacrifice given to us as the basis upon which we're saved. Without the Sabbath continually reminding us that that God saves us, we do not save ourselves. It's very easy to slip off into a legal religion, you know, where you're working and working and trying to please him and you're not sure if you've pleased him yet and, and I wonder how many points I've scored with the God of heaven and earth and maybe I don't have, don't have enough, maybe I don't have enough points, that kind of a thing. So the Sabbath is a really crucial reminder of what the Bible teaches about righteousness by faith, that we're saved by God and not by ourselves. How easily people slip backwards into the idea that they have to do something themselves that, that will merit their salvation. The Sabbath safeguards against that. Far from being a burden, some crazy burden that's just bearing us down, the Sabbath is a great blessing. And God wants us to draw close to him. He wants us to unite together and worship him on his Sabbath day, the seventh day of the week, roughly our Saturday. Well, let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, this is a pretty somber item here, fire in Jerusalem that will not be quenched if they disregard the Sabbath. There must be something a lot more important about the Sabbath than we, many of us, have thought. Please bless your people today. Help us, Lord, to hear your calls to reform, to come back to you, to come back to the Christianity described in the Bible, Lord. We just praise you for calling us to come to you on your Sabbath day and be blessed. Help your people, Lord, and Help us not to make the mistake that Judah obviously made by ignoring your call to reform. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God help us to heed that call to reform. By the way, I just wanted you to know that uh, we are shifting again because we're following Jeremiah. We're trying to follow it chronologically. And so after we've concluded chapter 17 here, our morning devotional tomorrow is going to go back to Jeremiah 7, and we're going to work our way back through those next chapters as we're continuing along the pathway to go through the book of Jeremiah and see what, what helps God has for us in his book. God be with you today.